<laughs> so, um, at the end of last season, we were kind of uh, in a sticky predicament. <laughs> sticky predicament. <laughs> um, so, uh, can you tell us a little bit about you know how much time has elapsed since we last saw everyone, and, you know, at the beginning of the next season, and perhaps a little bit about what you're doing <laughs> if you can. Perhaps. <laughs> um, not much time has passed. In the end of season three, Bo goes missing, so we pick up right where we left off. And I think people will find that the show is very different, you know, right off the bat. It's it's a completely different feel and dynamic with Bo not being there and, and things change a little bit when, when a key player like that, the key player uh, goes missing. So it'll be something cool and new and then eventually we'll go back to how things used to be and I think it'll be it'll give people a chance at the beginning of season four to miss that um, and then you know once it comes back full throttle it'll, it'll be a nice coming back home. So we're just going to see like Kenzie like chasing down a monster in an alley with like a if only things sword. were that simple. No. <laughs> if only. Um, no. I mean, claim, at the end of season three, claimed humans are considered terrorists. So without Bo there, Kenzie's got to relearn how to survive. And she's got to, you know, use her skills, her street skills, her theming skills, her bravery, her, you know, creativeness. She's got to use it all just to survive the day, survive the hour, and, and not get killed. So... There's a lot of suspense and, and things are very tense and she's just trying to find her way and she gets mixed up in some bad situations because of that and has to bail herself out for once, you know, and not depend on anybody else. So it's it's a challenging journey. It was a brief time when Kinsey had uh, superpowers, so to speak, or she had some extra powers. Would you like to see that happen again? Or do you like keeping her human? I like her to experience everything. So if we decide in season four that she's going to, you know, try out a fey power, then, you know, I don't mind at all. <laughs> I think I've, I've, I've been the human long enough, so it'll be, it'll be fun to maybe introduce something new that she can do that she can use to, you know, whether defend herself or, or, yeah, I, I've already said too much. <laughs> You're, um, I, I noticed that in the fight scenes, you know, I, I, I assume that you, you have a dance background. Yes. yes. So I, 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 I kind of see that in the, in the fight scenes. I really like enjoy seeing So uh, are you really pushing to kind of get more fight scenes so you can kind of learn? I'm just pushing, yeah, to be more physical. When, when you add, you know, physical stunts or, or anything physical into acting, it, it makes it more fun. It adds a whole different element. So going to work and, and being able to do that that just, you know, it just makes me happy. So anything that's a challenge makes me happy. So that's what I'm constantly fighting for. Like Kenzie experience things that are new, different, constantly challenging her. So she's not the same. She has to grow up. You know, really for a long time, I feel like Kenzie's been, you know, the baby of the show. And I think season four, it's just time to grow up and, and get on her own two feet and, and do what she has to do to to get there. Now, we're seeing Bo's powers getting stronger and stronger. How is that going to affect your relationship with Kenzie? Their bond um, is unbreakable, but in season four, because Bo goes missing and experiences a whole other world with, without Kenzie, and Kenzie experiences a whole other world without Bo, when they come back together, it's like coming back home, but there's a few secrets and a few things that you know they need to talk about and, and a few growing pains that they grow through in season four. So Bo growing and developing and really you know coming into her own, it, it definitely affects the relationship. I can't tell you how exactly, but there's always going to be drama, and you know, they, I think they've had smooth sailing for a while in the friendship department. Um, they, you know, their their love and their bond is, like I said, unbreakable. But season four, we challenge that a bit so that they can, you know, keep growing and keep getting stronger. Uh, you and uh, uh, Kenzie and Hale had a pretty significant moment. In the oh. 
oh, whatever. Well, you know. It was a little, a little something. Um, a little Albert action. That's <laughs> okay. Um, is that... Do we get into that uh, immediately in the next season, or is that something that we, we don't start seeing more of until later? You know, with Kenzie and Hale, it's, it's been interesting. It's always like, one's hot, one's cold. One's cold, one's hot. So, meeting in the middle, uh, it's going to take quite a journey to get there if it goes there. Uh, so, it'll never be boring, and it'll always be frustrating, and, you know, full of full of feist and spunk, but I think that's what we love about them together. Um, so I look forward to, you know, having the fans see where their relationship goes and, and how it develops. There's a lot of really fun moments, though, so it's, uh, it's cool. Um, so, uh, we're going to have a different angle for CBS Radio, uh, and uh, what is, uh, what's your recent, what's your summer job? What is my summer jam? Yeah. Oh my god, I have so many. I'm such a music lover. I come nice. into my trailer every morning and I'm like the annoying girl that's like blasting music and her trailer, the whole set can hear it. Everything's like <laughs> vibrating. I'm just like, you know, getting to the, to the zone. My summer jam. You know what? I'm really into um, Pretty Young Thing by Michael Jackson right now. Okay. I'm a huge MJ fan. I grew up listening to him and, and it's always been a very like spiritual experience listening to his music. He's the king. Uh, so I'd have to say PYT by MJ. Okay. And the um, music for before before filming, after filming, what will be your general playlist? Um, it depends on my mood that day, but but it's always like very energetic music. So whether it's like top 40s hits or you know people like Jin Wing or who I've been really into lately, or um, you know whether it's like eclectic jazz or some days classical or dance music. Like it's always just a, a different a different uh, a different jam every day. Every hour. I'm sitting with my... We were filming in a beautiful location the other day, and I just went out one lunch, and I put on my, you know, Beats headphones and just lay in the grass and listen to music the entire, like, lunch hour. It's what I do all the time, so music is my is my love. Excellent. Thank you. Can you tell... Uh, still a little off, off subject. You have such an interesting name, your real name. Can you tell us a little bit about the origin of your name? It's Russian and Greek, um, and someone once told me that it means stranger, which I thought was very interesting. Um, yeah, I, th I think, stranger, I could be wrong, but I, th I think someone told me that once. It's always hard for people to pronounce. But it was like, I'm like, don't worry. Ksenia, <laughs> because technically it's Ksenia, but in America, people like don't associate the K and the S like, as one sound, so it, it's kind of changed over the years and some people say Ksenia and some people say Ksenia. Um, either way is fine with me but it's thank you thank you for, uh, for mentioning me. The um, show has really gained a lot of popularity um, and I kind of watched that go through social networking. Mm -hmm. um, so you're on Twitter. Oh, I watched Lost Girl because I watched this. Yeah. Um, you're on Twitter, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, did you see that growing uh, since you've been out there on Twitter, social networking, your fan base, your Twitter followers? Have you seen that grow? Twitter has been an interesting uh, journey for me because when we started the show, everybody was tweeting all the time. And I was like, no, I'm just not interested because I'm a very private person. And to me, I just I couldn't get into Twitter for a very, very long time. And just recently, I joined um, because I finally decided, you know what, if I can maybe use it for something good, then I'll open up a, a Twitter account. And it's been unbelievable. Not only have people supported the show and have supported Kenzie, and we get to interact and have fun, and I get to talk to the fans and, and keep them updated, but they've been supportive of causes that I support in my own life, and that has been the absolute world to me. That strangers that I don't know, I've, I've never met all over the world, are spending their time and energy helping me, you know, do what I love and, and fight for what I believe in. You know, it's been a real nice connection to have, which I never thought I would. I always kind of looked down on Twitter and I was like, well, who cares if I'm getting a coffee at the store? I mean, I don't I don't get it. But now, now I see what it is and I, I have a new appreciation for social media, definitely. What's the uh, geekiest thing about you? The geekiest thing about me? I am... 
Chris Holden Reed would probably answer this question well because me and him, anytime we're together, we're like the clumsiest people. Um, and and he sees my inner dork on set all the time. I think I'm just really I'm really shy, but I'm really like weird. It's hard to explain. If, if for, for people that know me well, um, I'm just a very weird person, um, but clumsy. I think maybe that's the darkest thing about me. I'll think on that. No one's ever asked me that before. Because <laughs> I always I'm just I always think I'm such a dork, but what exactly are the inner workings of that dorkiness that I have to think about? Um, one thing that I, I, I do notice in pretty much every episode I love at least one, if not everything that you're wearing. And the hair <laughs> yeah. and everything. I love all the things. So do you get to keep some of it? And also, you know, do you have any sort of uh, influence where you talk to, to the wardrobe people and say, oh, it'd be fun if we could wear something like this, or maybe we could put something like that together? We've been very lucky because Ann Dixon, who created the look of the show and of these characters, has been um, nothing but, uh, was always nothing but uh, open and collaborative. And being able to come in from day one and work with someone so gifted and talented and always looking for the next step. You know, that's what I want to bring into Kenzie's look always, is what can we do to take this to the next level? And in season four, it's been fun being able to go, listen, we've been doing this for three years, this has been working, how can we raise it to the next level, whether with hair, color, cuts, you know, designers that she wears or not designers, or mixing in, you know, grunge style with glamour, which has become, you know, a, a theme with Kenzie, I think, ever since, like, season two, just really glamouring it up. It's always been a great process, and I get to bring a lot of Ksenia into Kenzie and her fashion, because I'm such a lover. You know, my, my high heel staple, you know, that's, Kenzie wears high heels, you know, they're like her slippers, and, and that's my thing, too, so... It's been a, a great process, and I always want to take everything home. Um, I can't because I'm, I'm already like a traveling circus with my suitcases everywhere, and I have a lot of stuff, so I'm like, okay, I have to stop wanting to take everything, but I always have that desire, definitely. Do you feel very protective with your character? In what way? To guard, uh, to keep that in line with the background, the story, where it's going to develop. I do. I think all of us do. I think um, we just want to make sure that our characters are going places where we, you know, hopefully intuitively want them to go. Um, after you play a character for so long, yeah, it's like you're, you know, your baby, and, and you know that character really, after all these years, better than anybody. We're lucky that we have a great team that's collaborative, so we get to talk about everything and, and really plan out, you know, the stories for the characters, but yes, I would fight to the death to protect her and make sure that anything she says, anything she does is something that I truly feel that she would say or do. So anytime that we don't feel that way or maybe we see a line in the script or an emotion and we go, we don't feel that, you know, this and this character would say that or feel that the writers are, are very um, respectful and, and just you know, they know that we love these characters and just want what's right for them. Uh, is there a moment coming up in the next season that you're really looking forward to? Fans of Kenzie C. Yes. It's in the first episode of season four and I wish I could tell you about it because it's so cool. But what I can say is that um, it was not an easy feat. There was something that myself and two other characters had to do that was close to impossible. Everybody told us that we needed doubles because this was going to be physically impossible for us to do. And after a lot of hard work and stress and strain, um, we did it and we feel so proud. And I can honestly say it's the best, one of the best experiences I've ever had since day one on Lost Girl. So I'm really proud of it and, and excited for people to see and I wish I could tell everyone what it is but I can't. Um, what's been your kind of favorite type of fae that's been on the show so far and are there any kind of creatures or mythologies that you'd like to see explored? They always surprise me, you know, the writers. The fact that everything is based on real mythology, I think that's so awesome. So any, I, tr I fully trust them and any new creatures that they bring in, I'm always super excited and, and just always waiting for the next one because it just makes everything so fun. Um, I'm a huge fan of the mesmering that Vex does. I've always been. And... 
think we've had so many on the show. I think the concept of creatures feeding from humans, like emotionally, is a wicked concept. And to this day, like I, I've not gotten bored of that. You know, we have the vampires and the werewolves and like you know all of that. But the fact that someone can feed off your happiness or your jealousy or your greed, like that's just a very different concept and always you know keeps me on my toes and keeps me thinking. I'm sorry, I'm always like looking, waiting for the PR person to pop over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You felt it. Yeah, I know, I can see you. Yeah. So, have you ever had any like storyline requests that you have actually brought to them and go, hey, can you do this? And they said, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Any specifics on like um, um, the Kenzie Nate relationship? I really was very passionate about and had specific ideas of how I wanted it to go. I wanted it to be deep and, and heartbreaking, and I didn't want it to be just, you know, an easy fling. So that was something that I fought for, and, you know, I'm very lucky Jay Firestone, our producer and creator, he listens to me, and he listens to what I'm good at in my own life, and, and we try to use the opportunity to bring that into the show. You know, in season three, it was, I got to drum a little bit, you know, little, little fun things like that that give Kenzie that extra little flair and personality. In season four, we definitely try to bring a lot of that in. So he has been wonderful and our writers have been wonderful in, in bringing my passions from my own life into the show. Thank you guys very much. Thank you.